Hi! <laughs> Hello everybody. Welcome back to my channel. This is Elena. Hello. You might have seen her on this channel before because we made a video a little we while did. ago. It was really bloody good. It Let's was. It was. Yeah. We're great. And um, you know, we're doing another one. We're doing another one. So welcome back. Thank you very much, Lee. And um, we're going to be talking about bodies and history because this is a history channel. We did mm. sort of prep to do this video ages ago bloody ages and then ago. it just everything went wrong yeah and you showed me a version of this powerpoint mm -hmm. on zoom i did and we had a really good conversation we about did. it but just didn't film it no so <laughs> in elena's video <laughs> we were kind of more in depth we were more focused on today but we did venture into the misty depths of the past we and did. today it's going to be more we're just going to look at some stuff and be like huh lol um, <laughs> and maybe discuss a bit of the historical context around it because body ideals have been changing loads for ages and the perfect body is very much debatable and dependent on what people say it is mm. so really there is no perfect body exactly hello it is your favorite neighborhood editing hattie with some very important things to tell you about this video first of all it is a mess and i'm sorry so strap yourselves in for a wild ride um it was filmed six months ago yes i know that's how long it's taken me to film to edit this i'm very sorry i have a full-time job now and i'm busy um but whoops also this was a nightmare to edit because it was such a mess when we filmed it because we just filmed another video that was meant for elena's channel which i think has now been abandoned because it was a messy day um we were both really really tired i am like constantly eating crisps during it which is just so silly um the lighting's terrible um and the, just the energy level is just not it <laughs> and i'm sorry we're like constantly talking over each other the whole time and also i'd done all the research like weeks beforehand and then forgotten it all so half the stuff i'm like making up and i can't remember now whether what i'm saying is accurate or not and I, I really don't have the time, I can't be bothered to just go through and fact check every single thing I said. So you're just going to have to take everything with a massive pinch of salt. And I'm really sorry. Um, but you know what? This was not a history lesson. That's not what it was. It was meant to be. We're looking at a load of pictures of his, like people through history. Women and cisgendered um, women throughout like a few centuries of British history whoops I'm sorry um but you know we were meant to be like looking at these pictures and being like you know body image and body ideals have changed so much um you know your body is beautiful and valid and like love yourself um regardless of what like whether you fit into today's arbitrary standards like screw that your body's beautiful anyway um body ideals don't mean anything but then also we spend the whole video just like bitching about the images instead so I, it has been pointed out to me that that like undermines the whole premise but whatever you know what it's content i've made it it's done now enjoy <laughs> we start off with a lovely picture of that famous statue i don't remember what it is is it yeah, venus or something i it, i think it is venus yeah but why has she only got one arm did i well she hasn't even got one She's got neither. I'm gonna eat crisps, I hope that's okay. Absolutely it is, of course it is. Crunch. Because your body is perfect. Oh, thank you. <laughs> no, because I have, mm. in my room on my desk, that's yes. not with the head. Mm -hmm. That's a nice pamphlet oh. sticking out of it. So aesthetic. But yeah, even like we were saying earlier, mm. we were talking about how like in art, statues, paintings, art, mm. <laughs> people have a lot more realistic bodies and it's mm. really refreshing to see even though she looks pretty ripped mm. she still has like curves and lines it's not just like a smooth instagram photoshop and she doesn't have a tiny time. waist she no. just looks really strong yeah but also slim but in like a realistic way mm -hmm. not in a tiny teeny petite way i reckon she'd be a fairly heavy person just because of well, she's made of stone, first of all, but also yeah. those muscles, <laughs> you know? I think she would be quite overwhelmed. <laughs> yeah, BMI through the roof. Yeah. That's without two of her limbs. <laughs> My goodness. Okay, are we done? Are we moving on? We are. Hair! <gasps> do you like it? I do. Isn't it stunning? Oh. So you know what I was saying in, what, earlier about, well, in your video, 
about red hair coming into fashion. Yes. So this is a pre-Raphaelite painting. So 19th century, um, this is by Sir John Everett Millet. Um, it's called The Bridesmaid because um, there are loads of things in the foreground which I've cut out of this particular image. Um, but which you lovely viewers at home might be able to see, which are phallic and talk, you know, oh, suggesting. Why did you cut them? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, suggestive of the things that are on her mind because she's about to get married. Oh, I see. And she's got this long, luscious orange hair contrasted with the dark purpley blue. Yeah. It's just very striking. Well, Elizabeth Gitter, um, literary person, critic said um called this sort of hair a hair tent where her male lover would be able to um, retreat from the world encompassed by her hair but the red is meant to be like indicative of like I sensuality I and sexuality was going like tent as in as in she looks awful and like no blow away in the wind no as if if or she like, was like on top of him it would surround him and so he couldn't see any of, or the, rest if, of the world or, or if he was down not <laughs> <very much. laughs> it just adds a Very long hair, kind of wavy, kind of frizzy. I really like it though. It's beautiful. It is very frizzy, mm. but it looks great. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. It's iconic. Okay. In the past, covered hair for a lot of the time for women. This is a very women centric video. Apologies. Well, or, you know, you're welcome, whichever. In the past, covered hair was kind of the norm for women most of the time. Um, especially if they were outside. So how dull! I know. So we got this. I think it was a Swiss veil thing. I don't remember. I did my research months ago, um, so I'll, I'll clarify. Just make it up there. as we go. <laughs> but this is something in Northern Europe in the medieval era. Anyway, women wearing very kind of elaborate fabric on their head. I mean, it's not doing great for her forehead. If anything, yeah. it's drawing more attention to it because it's got its own little right. surprise curtain. Yes. Yeah. Um. It's a, it's a no from me. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure she's very offended, but fair enough. Um, she does look quite offended. She does. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, next to that, I've got a 19th century bonnet because it was kind of rude to go outside without a bonnet on for ages. One thing that struck me when I was watching, I think I told you about it, and I don't think you've watched it yet, Alias Grace. A famous book that got mm -hmm. turned into a Netflix series. And um, the woman in that, when she had her hair up, when she had sort of, you know now it's quite fashionable to have sort of like loose sort of tendrils mm -hmm. coming down and like little wisps. Mm. She had that, and then the woman of the house was like slut shaming her for that. And I was like, her hair looks lovely. You don't she want to lose her. No. no, no, tucked away and tidy. Yeah. Yeah. But what I don't get because you have to be demure. Oh my goodness. Having like a little, I literally, literally a little piece like this. It's like. <laughs> it's like why? <laughs> I literally did my dissertation on female hair in the nineteenth century. Oh. So, I feel like I don't want to go too in depth about that because some videos might be coming about. Oh okay. But um. Don't. Yeah, don't ruin your creative flow. In my dissertation, I basically argued that, like, hair was an indication of the soul. Ooh. So... I'm in trouble. <laughs> so trouble. If, it was wispy, <laughs> if it was, like, wispy and unkempt, that was very uncouth oh. and kind of dodgy. Interesting. Wayward. Wayward hair indicates a wayward spirit. Yeah, because I assumed the like loose bits of hair, it's mm. like you've been up to something because your hair's out of place. But it's, it's also like, you have to keep control of yourself, self-restraint, like in order to reflect the restraint of yourself. That's so interesting. For God or whatever. Wow. All yeah. for a bit of hair. All for a bit of hair. Honestly, I wrote 80 pages Wow. on hair. I'd love to read it. It's under there, you can. Um, <laughs> and then, massive hair. That looks very 80s. That is very 80s. That's because it is from 80s. the 80s. That would be why. <laughs> <laughs> That's from the film when, Hallie met, when Harry met Sally. When Harry met... Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then that there was from the Rococo era. Rococo? Mm. I've never heard of that. Rococo. 
Um, 18th century. Uh, Basically, especially around like the 17, 1780s, less so in the 1790s, that's when it started to dwindle, having massive hair was the thing. Um, and actually, like in the middle of the 18th century, hair just grew and grew and grew and grew. Is up. is this like Georgians? Yeah, yeah, Georgians. Where uh, there'd be? Am I thinking of it? That, I don't know if this is just like a caricature of mm. the, that time, where there's like bits of fruit yeah. and yeah, and it just got more and more ridiculous. <laughs> People were complaining that women would be going along with it, sticking their heads out the carriage because it couldn't fit in the. <laughs> In the carriage, you have the weekly bags. shop attached yeah. to it. <laughs> Just bags from Asta. <laughs> Just like a bit of pork slapped oh, on it. No, it would be carrots and apples. <laughs> carrots and apples, yes. Pork, no. But they, it was really interesting the way they did it because they used fat, um, like I think beeswax or duck fat. I don't even remember. Anyway, some kind of fat um, on their hair and powder. And they backcombed it, and they didn't really wash it, and they just made it bigger and bigger. And you'd go to the hairdressers if you were rich, like once a week. It. Yeah, uh, yeah. And you'd go to the hairdressers like once a week, and they'd do it for you. Like, also, is this their real hair? Their real hair. They also not a wig. No, they have hair pieces. Okay. It's not all their real hair. <laughs> That's a lot of backcombing. No, no, no. No, you can you can get quite high with backcombing because really? of the because of the waxing and, if you and just the, keep doing it and the powder every as week. well. Yeah. Um, but they use these things called hair rats. Rats. Yeah. Basically, if you brush your hair out, you end up with all the hair left over We've on your brush. We've talked lots about rats over the last few days. Yes, we are in London, ladies and gentlemen. Um, <laughs> So you, you brush your hair, whenever you brush your hair out, you get hair left on your brush. Yeah. You take that off and they put it in a little pot and they'd collect it and then put it in a bit of fabric. Oh, and then, and then whack use it, it on. Yeah. Use it underneath things to create bigger and bigger poofs. That's very exciting, very cool, isn't, isn't it? it? Yeah. How, do you know like how heavy it would have been? Well, you said they had to stick their head out of carriage windows. <laughs> so pretty heavy, I would assume. Probably. I mean, it's just hair. But especially but if yeah. you start putting your fruit basket in <laughs> no matter. I think it just depends. Really quickly. Yeah. <laughs> and then that out, went out of fashion in like the 1790s when everyone just thought this is a bit ridiculous. Less hair. I'm going to undo my belt because I've eaten too many scones. Go for it. I'm going to carry on eating crisps. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I've got three humble pickings for you. Yeah, that's very... They're quite contrasting. Mm-hmm. Um... <laughs> I've got a portrait by Tor Thomas Lawrence from 1822. This is in the wake of the massive hair, like hair just got smaller and smaller and smaller until it was the fashion to have it pulled back, little curls, and just very natural. What, Pride and Prejudice? Pride and Prejudice era, yes. Yeah. Kira Knightley, come to mum. Oh yeah. <laughs> I like think it. it's really pretty, yeah. Mm. I mean, I much prefer it to the beehive that you have. Okay. <laughs> and then 1920s. The aim was to look as boyish as possible. That is so, like, alien to me. Mm. Thinking about that and like yeah. the whole more rectangular boyish yeah. figure, yeah. and the hair as well, and then the contrast from that to what it's like now is just bizarre. Yeah. So you've got the finger waves on the side. Yeah. But then bobs, as short as possible. Not much hair. Just short. I like the little sort of wisp that's. Oh, they're cute. Under the jaw. They? That's nice. Yeah, it's cute. And quite flattering. Yeah. Oh, I'm nearly at the end of my crisp, my goodness. <laughs> and then I've got Jennifer Aniston, 19. Well, no, early 2000s when hair was just really straight a lot of the time. Yeah. With lays. Not much going on. No. I mean, it's nice. Yeah. But there's. Not much going on. No. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to the end of hair. What's your preferred? Less hair, massive hair, or covered hair? Well, definitely not covered hair. Mm. Definitely not all the hair. Mm -hmm. Not less hair. Oh. Somewhere in the middle. <laughs> that doesn't count. <laughs> if you had Do to I be one, to one of these less... ladies, oh. who would you be? The mannequin counts. I'd rather be a man. <laughs> no. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, I think her. Yeah, I think we're going back to 18, the 1820s. Portrait of Mrs. Lillerton. Mm. Littleton, not Littleton. Littleton. <laughs> <laughs> Lillerton. 
Yeah, I like that one. If you want to be able to do that hairstyle, see my video on Regency hairstyles. I do really like it though, I, I think like it's it. really cool. It was meant to be as natural as possible, but curly. Yeah, I do really like Pretty. it. Pretty. We're on to faces now. What do you think of that face? That's the second I think we talked about it, on, I mean we talked about all of these ones too, mm. but I think I said it looks, to me, more masculine. Mm -hmm. If the eyebrow didn't finish there, it wouldn't look as masculine. I don't know, I think she's still got quite a long, prominent, pointy nose and quite defined lips and I don't, I just think... It's just not as soft. She looks quite, pa like, pointy. Yeah, it's not as soft. And that was by Dante Gabriel Rossetti. Okay, Tudor portraits. What do you think of these faces? <laughs> well, <clears throat> how, how likely is it that they were accurate to the people that were being painted? Oh, fully unlikely. Yes, well. But this was the ideal. This was like their Instagram filter was just paint me better than I look. <laughs> Which, fair enough. So they wanted really, really pale skin, long, thin noses, no eyebrows, no eyelashes, deep set eyes. Why did they want no eyelashes? I don't know. That is very odd. So odd. It's interesting because they all look very similar. Mm -hmm. That portrait of Queen Elizabeth looks a bit like um, the face of the man that wrote Horrible Histories. I can't remember what his name is. <laughs> I don't know if I know who that like, really? what he looks like. Look! Actually, <laughs> plot twist, that's why I wrote it. He is, he is <laughs> Queen Elizabeth the <laughs> first. This poor sod. Catherine of Aragon. Lucked. Oh, now I feel really mean. I know. Oh dear. Yeah. I mean, I mean, she was most unfortunate in. Well, I mean, I guess she not, wasn't. She wasn't, she wasn't beheaded. killed. True, but she did get divorced for like the first time ever. Sure, yeah. That you could get divorced. That's a tad awkward. Pretty rough. Yeah, just a bit. <laughs> I don't like. The headpiece that she's wearing is making her forehead look larger than it is. Yep. Which isn't the most... Not the most flattering. Factory. No. No. I'm going to put them back now that she's crumbs. <laughs> <laughs> What's the verdict? Thumbs down? In the middle. In the middle? Okay. We'll do they're that. of paintings of this mm. time frame. Mm -hmm. They're not as creepy as other ones. But these kind of paintings, I think, look quite eerie mm -hmm. sometimes. Whereas these don't so much. Maybe Fair Catherine enough. of Aragon's one a tad more. I just think the faces, like facial beauty wise, how would they do in today's standards? They wouldn't really. I don't know. Again, it's I guess... really tiny lips as well. Yeah. Maybe it's Elizabeth's red hair which is making her lips and cheeks look a bit more flushed. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving on. Moving on. Dante Gabriel Rossetti. I just Ooh. think the women he painted is so it's just so interesting because they were meant to be the epitome of beauty and I think some of their faces look so weird like really scrunchy plump lips but like but short and then long nose very defined chin but I wonder are they mm. weird because they are a bit odd like the proportions mm. or are they weird because of the beauty standards that we've grown up with. So looking at them, we're like, oh, that's wrong, uh, wrong. Yeah, I mean, probably both. That one, Lady Lilith, of all of them looks the, yeah, most, the most beautiful. Yeah. And he spent, I think, a really, really long time on that one. Like her face was repainted and redrawn again and again and again to get it right. The lips and like her skin are quite mm. soft and youthful very pale. but if she had shorter hair mm. she could that face to me could be like a boy or a girl mm -hmm. quite androgynous yeah yeah i think a lot of her faces are quite androgynous especially yeah this one these ones of um pandora which face would you rather have out of all of them i think i like hers the lady most. lilith yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're going to talk about waists now yeah do you know what that garment is? Mm. Oh, it's a corset. Yes, it's a corset. I thought you'd purposely like put a not corset on there. <laughs> no, that's a corset. Catch me. You can tell there's all, In the, a boning. Trick. There's all the boning there. You've got the the other one is class at the top. The other one is a stay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Um, Which I only know because of you. <laughs> <laughs> so Ew. here we go, some more corsets. This is what we're talking about accentuated waist. So in the middle of the 19th century especially, and then also the 1950s where the new look came in with cinched waist and hourglass figure. What do you think? Interesting. Mm. Again, because this, the premise of having an accentuated waist does still kind of exist yeah. now. I guess not as drastically as this. Mm -hmm. I think having it come in so far and then the poofy skirt out mm -hmm. makes it look a lot more drastic mm -hmm. than it does now. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas without the poofy skirt, it probably would be closer to what a lot of people wear now. Yeah. Like corsets as a top have come. Mm -hmm in fashion like the past year really haven't yeah, they people love them again they have yeah yeah and the 1950s silhouette i prefer the other one <laughs> really the 1940s one i do yeah i'm just not a fan Sorry, of 1840s this situation oh the pelmet yeah i'm not it's no yeah i don't love them no moving on hidden waists don't like it don't like it. Or do We've I not? We've got an like... empire waistline on the on the left. That was that was very early nineteen. That's just century. under boob. It is under boob. <sighs> I have to admit though, I do have a soft spot for an empire waistline. It's do partially you? because I have quite a high waist. Anyway, but it's also yeah, but not up because... to your armpits. No, waist. not up to my armpits. No, I know. No, but it was there was some like. 1830s it was kind of like going down a bit so it wasn't quite up there but it was like still quite high show bit of the knee but um that's that's like if you see austin things yeah and um, pie waistlines yeah and so I can you hide see the, the actual hair. waist mm -hmm. yeah yeah so you hide the actual waist but the the fake created waist is right up there and this is just before like proper corsets came in as well so they weren't sucking themselves in so much they were because really that i was gonna say that looks mm. very much like that of like the rectangular yes. yeah the 1920s yeah the 1920s was just a weird vibe really odd really really, really, odd. really odd very boxy you wanted to cover up your curves cover up your shape yeah just be boyish and slender why did that come into fashion i think it was in it was like a reaction against the like corseted hourglass figure of the previous time. Basically. Was it anything to do with not being sexualized in the same way by like hiding your curves or not? Maybe. Because this was, I don't know if that doesn't make sense because this was what was seen to be desirable at the time. Yeah. So that kind of. Yeah, no, it might have been. Doesn't I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. I think it. I think it was partially just because of the novelty of it. Maybe. Yeah. And it was meant to be more, more elegant and the sort of pulled in stuffy things were less, seen as less like desirable. So would you, oh, yeah. <laughs> would you prefer accentuated or hidden waist? Accentuated. I do prefer that too. <laughs> Much prefer that. Yeah. Although again, a soft spot for the empire waistline. We're on to boobies. <laughs> my favourite. <laughs> I think that's such an interesting picture. I love it so much. I can't remember when it's from. I think it might be around 1910. Is that? But I don't remember. Is that some armpit hair? Has. I love it so much. Armpit hair. She's like, she's a really, she looks like a really healthy weight, like very, she just looks like full a normal in her figure. Woman. Yeah, exactly. She looks like she has meat on her bones. Yes. Yeah. And this position I like because you can see mm -hmm. just a normal arm. Mm -hmm. I keep going to use the word like, not skinny or like bigger it's not as she's just normal yeah like a yeah. normal woman yeah and again like fuller in her face not she super. just looks like very soft and quite like slightly yeah. plump like the sort of rounded cheeks mm. and like flush and just i really like it yeah and with her booby out because why not out. i can't remember when this is from but i know that Especially in the later 18th century, being a bit plumper and a bit softer was kind of in fashion. Weirdly as well, I like <laughs> the boob in this because it's it's not coming across as like sensual. Yeah. It's more just like the She's just getting dressed and there's yeah. a boob, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like it, I really like it. But at the end of this round, are we going to pick what boob we want? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How rude were breasts? Because I've got, this is, this is 18th century. Um, this is yeah, like 19th what, century. What was seen as being like raunchy. The thing is, in comparison with like knees, boobs weren't that rude. <laughs> or a bit of ankle. Yeah, genuinely. That's so funny. Because 
Especially in the in the eighteenth century, oh. breastfeeding your kids was really in style. It suddenly became fashionable to start breastfeeding your own children instead of having someone else do it. Instead of having a wet nurse, yeah. <sighs> so like whipping a boob out wasn't that bad, and like a lot of, okay, maybe not like in public, but you know, a lot of. I'm slightly making this up as well. I actually don't remember. It's fine. But like loads of these styles, especially the evening dresses, were really low cut. Like, it was really common to have so much cleavage on show for ages. But were women wearing this style of dress mm. all very slim with smaller no. boobs? No. no, literally all shapes and literally sizes. all shapes and sizes. Mm. Lower cut. Because now, show. a thing very much is, like, certain styles of clothes are more acceptable on smaller mm-hmm, mm-hmm. busts than bigger. Yeah. Like, if you walked around just in a tank top, mm-hmm. you'd be fine. But if I did... <laughs> what people be like bloody hell <laughs> <laughs> just because they're more out right right yeah I just wondered if it was the same with that I mean no not really and even in this like uh, 19th century fashion plate uh, the evening gown is really low cut okay it wouldn't have been during the day like in the evening it, especially considering like that that dress goes all the way to the floor Covering nothing everything. else is on show but her shoulders are out and she, that dress is really low cut. Yeah. But it wasn't that scandalous. But her friend is like <laughs> <laughs> covered up completely. But that's just during the day, like. Oh, wait, no. Is this her? That's her. Oh, so that's during the day, and that's in the evening. <laughs> it's not just her with her friend. It's like. <laughs> Does size matter? We've got the bullet bra boobs of the 1950s. That's so weird. Pointy, and pointy. Pointy, pointy. And then. The flat chestedness of the early 1920s. Really? I think smaller boobs at the moment are more in fashion with TikTok, I'd say, mm-hmm. because it's like Y2K wearing like lots right. of tiny tops right. and mm-hmm. cropped things. Yeah. And if you have a larger front, such as myself, <laughs> you just have more on show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And a lot of styles that are so popular, like the little tank tops, are worn catering like, to smaller chests. Yeah, and wearing yeah. about a bra. Right, right. Yeah. Whereas if I didn't wear a bra, it'd be out of the tank top. <laughs> they can't really do it. <laughs> but I remember like more when we were growing up, like earlier two thousands, mm. like the bigger, the fake bigger the breasts better, yeah. were really like it. Yeah, and then yeah. yeah, bigger breasts in general were very much like. Yeah. Whereas now maybe not so much. Mm. Which would you prefer of all of the bubbies? Just both the women that are flashing them out. Yeah. <laughs> I really like, yeah. Oh, nice. I really like the ethereal one. I think the first one's my favourite just because it's so casually, like, just yeah, think, just getting dressed. I just feel like it's such, like, a warm, intimate picture. I really like, I love all the warm tones in it. Yeah. We're on to hips now. Oh, my lord. <laughs> <laughs> it's a must. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't remember which era this is in, but I think it's either late 17th or early 18th century. It's like she's got a chest of jewels under there. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been made like a metal cage, like a literal, sometimes made of wood, but usually metal cage. What did they do about doorways? Double doors. <laughs> they just didn't come anywhere. This would have been only for the really, really, really rich people in like very very special occasions like as well this is not an everyday thing well it's just where my mind always goes sure. if you really need a wee yeah what, what are you gonna do i don't know yeah you just wet yourself yeah <laughs> that's your option <laughs> yeah i don't know it's just a bit weird yeah accentuated hips have often been in style um i've got some pictures of crinolines here i mean that's a that's that's in stays, that would have been um, early 18th century, but this is 19th century, that would have been middle, like 1840s, 1850s, where you wanted the bell shape, very big, and then this is like the later end of the century, where you just wanted your bum to look big and for it to go out that way. Yeah. Big old hips. It looks a bit strange, I think it's the massive skirt. Yeah. And maybe not so much the accentuation accentuated waist okay sl- slim hips don't like it so we've got the 1960s um shift dresses where you just didn't you wanted to make them look slim um and this is um really early 20th century where corsets were really long because they wanted to pull in your tummy 
and your waist and your hips to make you look as slim as possible. The more like no waist or hips mm. seems a lot more weird because no one's actually like that. No. No one's body is just this. No. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas this is more moulding to whichever body it's put on. So yeah, that's true. Prefer that. Okay. Made bigger or pulled in? Pulled in. Yeah? Yeah. Fair enough. I think I prefer bigger, to be honest. Oh. Life of the party. It's just my personal preference. Oh. I think wearing crinoline would be really fun. Here we go, bums and bellies. Bottoms. Bottoms. <laughs> I really like this picture as well. I really like this picture too. Because she just looks like a normal woman. Yep. You can see bits of cellulite. You can see like slight bits of rolls and like she just looks plump and soft and like she has quite a masculine face, I think. She does well. have quite a masculine face. Loving all the androgyny. This was kind of turn of the 20th century, I think. Where it was kind of in fashion to be a bit soft and plump and round. You can see her belly as well. Just poking out. Just like, whoop. It's nice. Hmm. Yeah. There we go. Artificial bums. That's this a bum strange. roll. <laughs> this is really strange. That's a bum roll. <laughs> and that's, um, uh, like, a uh, rough rustles. It just looks really funny. Bustles, that's it, sorry. Rustles. <laughs> I can't, I'm too tired. <laughs> yeah, so this would have been, like, medieval and early modern eras. Um, and then, this is, like, 19th century. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? Yes. What do you prefer? Normal bum. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really fancy having a lifeboat on <laughs> These look like armbands. But I'd rather have a bum roll than a bustle. Pregnancy. Uh, no, no it's, it doesn't seem to be so Vladimir Putin. Yeah. <laughs> What's he yeah. doing there? <laughs> yeah, he does look like Vladimir Putin. Um, this is a medieval painting <sighs> where they wanted to show that she's fertile, so they've taken a picture with her holding a load of fabric up in front of her belly, so she looks pregnant. So, giving her a big belly to make her look preggers. Oh my god. So interesting. Yeah. Nutty. Nutty. That's crazy. Would they do that often? I don't think so. I don't know. I don't know. The scandal. I'm not an actual historian, can you tell? <laughs> I'm just asking you everything like, <laughs> you're going to definitely know the answer. <laughs> I just think it's really weird. It is really weird. Yeah. Cool, moving on. Softness. Oh, I love this. I love this. I don't too. like that one. I love that one. Okay, not the face. No. But I think she looks so pretty. That's very like turn of the century, turn of the twentieth century, like late Victorian, early This Edwardian. I adore. Renaissance so much. Renaissance so and Rococo. Much. So that's that's like early modern, and that's like eighteenth century. Like ethereal, mm. with like bits of fabric covering mm. them, like water mm. nymph. Oh, I love it. I love it so and much. And like tummies and yes. bums and rolls and like yes. softness. <laughs> just look like normal women it's so nice mm. that's my absolute favorite and then she's got a bit of an hourglass yeah i mean the actual, the actual drawing of the body is really nice it's yeah. just i think it's maybe the charcoal i'm mm -hmm. not such a fan of well, fair enough. yeah and then flat tummies yep so we've got um this lovely number <gasps> from the very early um 20th century where she's like wearing a corset they were called s corsets or like s bend corsets i don't remember because yeah. yeah um because they pulled in your tummy um as well as your waist and then the very early 2000s where it was um low-waisted stuff which is all flat coming tummy. back around again i hate it i, I really, really don't it. like it. it i just don't think it looks flattering on anybody i don't to be honest some people can pull it off but i think it's despite yeah despite the clothes i just don't like clothes. it i really no. don't I was going to say either on really skinny people, it doesn't look... I just don't think it looks good on anyone, to be honest. I don't think it matters what your tummy looks like. It's just not... I don't know. It's just, I just don't really like it. I don't like it either. 
just the idea of not being able to pull them up. Yeah. I tried on a really nice pair of flares and H&M, mm-hmm. but then to my dismay, I realised they were low rise. Oh, and it was just it. an awful experience. I hate it. <laughs> it was so horrible. I hate it. I hate it so much. It just much. didn't support. It was just so weird, like, not having the fabric come up to, yeah. like, your waist. Your waist. But, like, here. Was, uh, no, I just... And I hate that style, like, that beauty standard of having to have a really flat tummy because no one does. Literally nobody does. Literally no Because one. you eat something or drink some water and then your tummy's not flat anymore. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Honestly. So, out of all of these, would you rather have artificial bum, um... Be pregnant. Be pre- <laughs> look pregnant. <laughs> and that's it. That is the last bit of footage I have. <laughs> it it just cuts out there. <laughs> I don't have anything else. No outro, literally nothing. I don't know why I'm bothered. Oh dear. If you have bothered watching all of that, then oh my goodness, I love you. Here are some bloopers. Like, enjoy. You deserve them. Oh, oh mummy. Water. 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 Drink, drink, thank you. Well, alright, this wasn't what I was promised. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you don't see what goes on behind the camera. Testing, 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 one, two, four. Um, I don't know. We're a bit knackered because we were trying to not get blown away by Storm Eunice. <laughs> Storm Eunice, oh, she's wrecking the country. Wrecking I wasn't the supposed to be here right now, I should no, be at home. And stranded. In this situation. I'm having to provide refuge from the storm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't do I didn't do my lips, did I? Oh no. Are they looking a bit? Mm. I mean, they look fine, but you you might as well do a little. Okay, a little touch. I'll up. be back. Hold on. I'll hold the fort. Thanks. A few moments later. I'm back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Revived in the lip region and ready to talk. Oh yes, looking plump and lovely. Thank you. Plump and lovely. That is a controversial <laughs> statement that we're going to be exploring today in this video. <laughs> and that we touched upon earlier in my Earlier in your... So as I was saying... It's not that far, I don't know. I still don't know stuff. <laughs> okay. Thank God for that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. I'm full of historical accuracy. <laughs> It's really weird, isn't it? And, and the dresses were so... Yeah, we get, we're going to go Oh, okay, sorry, sorry. We're just talking about sorry. the hair now. Sorry, I'm just <laughs> Why was it pulled up there? Instead of actually at the waist? Um, I don't know. Fair enough. Four and a half for good. 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 Oh dear, not again. Mm. Babes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is the vibe, guys. I'm sorry. Mm, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've scheduled in a nap time. We have. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Me too. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. Weird. Shall we zoom through the last? Shall oh, we? Well, are there are there loads left? Not really. Oh, we've done, we've done well. No, just bums and Oh! And that's it. Beauty standards are fickle. Mm-hmm. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. One more lot. Come on, will it? Night, night. Night, night. Night, night. Night, night. So, the that's the right. Normal bum, bum is better. 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 <laughs> yeah, we are. Yeah. <laughs>